Hi there, I'm Christy. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I am in Northern Alberta, Canada, growing zone 2B. And I'm going to talk to you about that today. Um, so uh, if you if you are here or have been at my channel before, you probably have been here for the pantry challenges that I've been posting a lot about lately. And I'm really grateful that you um, stopped by and learned uh, what I've been doing and, and um, you know, in, took the time to engage with me on my channel. It really means a lot to me. And so I just wanted to kind of have a little discussion today about how I um, really up my game when it comes to pantry challenge, saving money, um, really getting into the homesteader lifestyle or gardening, whether it's a large scale or a small scale. So I just wanted to uh, quickly kind of go over some things and then also give you a schedule that I have that I use to maximize my production in a growing season, especially here where we have a, a very short season. So I hope you do stay tuned. I hope you give a thumbs up um, and subscribe and hit the bell so that you can come back for other videos. And I'm gonna put my cat outside because she's clawing on my carpet and my chair. So one second. One of the really big confusing things um, people really have a hard time understanding and have grasping the concept of is zones. Now I, the way I was originally just like learned about this way back when I was like in my 20s, it really confused me. And I think that there still is a lot of confusion out and uh, in this world about what a growing zone is. So what I've learned just by interacting with you guys here on my channel, even though I'm way north in Alberta, um, I've learned from many of you that we have a very identical growing season where there might be a hundred days where you get a frost date the same as I do and some of you are living in the states and so or other places in the country or other places in the world and you have a very similar climate to what we do and very similar frost dates. So one of the things that I had learned is that um, from just interacting with you is just how similar um, of things we can grow. Um, sometimes it's the humidity that's a factor or the moisture level that's a factor. Um, but the actual spring freeze and fall freeze, it really has nothing to do with the growing zone where some people kind of are confused about that. So my growing zone is growing zone 2B. And that means that I can plant things that are winter hardy for about 40 below. Um, and anything that can't handle 40 below, I can't plant here because it won't survive the winter. And that's how the zones are, are configured. So if you don't know your, your growing zone, you can go and look that up online and you can find an interactive map. Um, and separate from that growing zone is your, your dates of your frost dates, your spring frost date and your fall frost date. So aside from your growing zone, a person would have to look up separately your frost dates in your, in your area. So how I looked it up is I just put in my town and I wrote in Google basically um, what is the frost date or a frost date for my town where it's where it's located in like Manning, Alberta, Canada, and it come up with a date which was May twenty fifth. So you can also put in your postal code, and it will it'll tell you an average date. And I think the duration is ten years. You could also go to Farmers Almanac, and they have a website that'll calculate it for you, as well as Johnny Seeds. Johnny Seeds has a really great tool that I use to calculate my flowers and some of my some of my plants that I do have in the schedule that I'm sharing with you today. Um, I learned a, a lot about that off of Johnny's website. There's also West Coast Seas and Vessies, 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 I can never say it right. Um, they have resources as well that I have used in the past, but I think most seed companies do offer um, information for your growing zones and whatnot in your area. So that's a really great resource is to contact or to go through your local seed suppliers websites and, and do a little bit of a search, dig around. I know Johnny Seeds for their, their seeds that they have, they have a gardener's 
um, or gr like a information for growers and, and I will link that all down below for you so you can enter your frost date and figure out a customized schedule for yourself. But I'm gonna share mine with you today. So what I, what I know is that um, in my 100 day season, I need to maximize my production of food and I need to get ahead of the game. I need to, I can't just like put everything out at one time. I have to be strategic, one, because the volume of things that I need to do is too great for me to handle one day by myself. But I could do like container gardening. Now, before anyone judges about, well, you have to have lots of food for the year, you just have to be efficient and you have to do a little bit of planning. Now, planning is not my strong suit. In fact, I'm like a professional wing it, winging it kind of person. Um, <laughs> whenever there's a plan, it gives me anxiety because I know it's going to get messed up somehow um and that's just the way my i've always learned how to just think on my feet but with garden planning i know that i do have to be efficient i have to know dates and i have to have some structure in order to be efficient and i can throw a bunch of stuff out there and it'll grow and i'll have a good a good harvest but it won't be the most or the best i can do and so even me um i do have to you know, herd myself in like a bunch of cats almost. And like, you ever heard cats? That's kind of like what it's like to gain, gain my attention. Um, so I have done that, learned how to do that so I can actually create a schedule for myself or have at least a random idea. So I have a book that I write stuff in. I actually have a journal, a gardening journal. I can't find it, so um, I do have it in here, but it's got all my notes for different flower farming stuff. But it also has my schedule in it. And I, I actually have this schedule on my website that I have um, in a chart like this, but it's like not messy writing, like my, my messy writing. And if you, FYI, if you do ever see anything on my website that has my writing and my writing is really messy, it's because I broke my I broke my arm and had surgery and I never did the physio. Um, and so I'm I have really bad writing because I just I can't use my hand the way I used to be able to, so I chicken scratch. Anyways, um, side note, squirrel moment. Um, you can be really efficient in, in square foot gardening or you can be really efficient in having raised beds or a very small area if you do a little bit of planning and companion planting and stuff like that. Someone asked me, well, how much do you need to have in order to be efficient? Here's an example. I grew approximately and harvested 50 cobs of corn that I harvested and put into the freezer, um, approximately 50 cobs. So. Um, the plants that I grew, they, they average to have two, two ears of corn per plant. And I harvested one, one and I preserved it and then I canned the other round of it. So I probably had about a hundred cobs of corn that I was able to harvest um, because I planted 50, 50 corn plants. So each one gave me two. So we ate some that were fresh and then the rest I preserved. I preserved in two ways. I preserved in um, canning, which I cut off the corns and I canned, I canned the corn in a salsa. I made a corn salsa and I should have made, I would have had enough to make a corn relish, but I just ran out of time. So I just made a corn salsa, but then I took those cobs and then I made a maple syrup out of the cobs, um, maple corn syrup for baking and cooking and stuff like that. So there was that. Um, and then the other 25 co cobs of corn, I, um, or the other 50 cobs of corn, I, um, approximate 50. I shook them and blanched them and froze them. And then we froze some random corn, whole corn cobs, but there was like maybe, I think a dozen that we did that with. So um, there, you know, 50 plants gave us enough food for a whole year. I will definitely have m uh, enough I made, I made an abundance of corn salsa. We have plenty. We're a family of three. We have lots of corn throughout the whole year. I'm in fact, even freeze drying some of that corn and then grinding it up to make like a corn flour with it. And so I can make tortillas and stuff like that. So um, those, fi those 50 plants went a really long way. Um, and so 
for, for myself, I have to know when should I start those plants so that I do get those two full cobs and make the most efficiency out of my space. And so that's where a, a schedule like what I'm about to share with you comes in handy. So with corn, just as an example, I have it on my list and I'll, my the link to this specific list is down below. Um, if you wanted to go look at that so you can see what I'm looking at, then you can download the, or you can, you can go to my link there and just, and open it up so you can see my list on my website as well. Um, but corn, I know that the corn, corn I need to um, plant out in my zone, right? In my zone, I need to plant corn out May 25th to June 8th in order for me to get the full, the full, um, everything out of that corn that I'm gonna get, I need to have it planted by June the 8th. So direct sowing isn't gonna work really well for me because of our frost date and stuff and corn does need a little bit of a warmer start. So I have in my list, I know exactly when I need to plant that corn or start that corn in seedling, as seedlings. So April 27th to May 25th, I have to get my corn seedlings started. So then I can write that on my calendar and I, I know, okay, April, from April 27th to May 25th, if I want to have my full maximum growth and maximum abundance out of those 50 corn plants, so I don't have to plant 100 corn plants to get the same amount, I need to have them planted from May 25th to June 8th. So that means I have to have them started before May 25th and after May, uh, April 27th. So it gives me a window it gives me it gives me a specific point in time where i know that is going to maximize my efficiency and i'm going to spend the least amount of money i'm not going to plant them too early or too late i'm going to get the maximum efficiency out of my corn that i'm planting and i'm not wasting any money um, or time because time is very valuable um, the other thing is like squash squash so um squash is really hard you know on the back of a packet for example it says transplant or direct so when soil warms up in late spring or tra or transplant three to four weeks earlier or start trans start transplants three to four weeks earlier optimal temperature for germination is 25 to 35 degrees celsius or 68 to 95 degrees fahrenheit so i know that i will not be able to bring this to full maturity um, if I was to direct sow this in my climate. I know that if I want to be efficient and I want to have a harvest, so I could plant way less plants, take up way less space if I'm efficient and I know how to maximize the production out of my squash. So I'm gonna go to my little schedule and sow squash. When does squash need to be started? Well, I need to start seeds in my house on my heat mat from May 11th between May 11th and May 18th, based on my on my frost date of May 25th, because that gives them enough time to grow, so I can plant them out by or for June 8th, no sooner than June 8th, because the soil is typically not warm enough. But June 8th is my target date to be able to plant them out, so I have enough season to get the maximum production out of these seeds. And so having a schedule like this is. So so, so important, so important. So I wanna go over some things that you might be wanting to consider right now. So today is the 28th of February, and um, so March is, you know, a few hours away, basically. And I wanted to kind of go over this because um, many of us are looking at seed starting. I am in full on production. My grow shelves are full. I have no heat mats available right now because I'm in full production because of my flower farm. And I also get a month head start because I have a greenhouse, a heated greenhouse. So um, I'm kind of ahead of the game more so than I want to be because I do I do have you know other other structures but without the greenhouse without the cold frame with just having target dates based on my um on my schedule some of the things that you might be able to if you're close if you have a frost date a, a 
a last season frost date um, or last frost date of May 25th or within within the end of May if you're if you have frost going up into the end of May this schedule will actually be very relevant to you and if you don't then this will give you a list of, of vegetables that perhaps maybe um, you can start right away if you have a, if you're in a bit of a warmer climate than you than I am you probably could start these right away um, or maybe it's getting to be too late for you to start these already so just some things I'm gonna go over and uh, you know something to consider so cabbage right now cabbage March 16th between between March 16th and April 27th cabbage is something that I can start because I need to plant those out four weeks before my last frost date yes cabbage gets planted out four weeks before your last frost date as a target plant date so April 27th to May 25th is my target date for me to be able to plant cabbage seedlings in my garden space which ideally would be like raised beds and if you um you know if you're in a warmer climate you're probably getting close to your target date and you might want to plant them today if you haven't started them yet collards collards is another one Coll collards you can plant out another like four weeks before your last frost date so um you know may 25th is mine so i can plant these out around my target is April 27th for the collards. So I can start the collard seedlings on May 16th, between May 16th and May 30th is ideal for me to start collard seedlings to be able to plant out into my garden. Kale, now kale is so hardy. Um, kale can also be planted out four weeks before the last frost date and it so ideally I would need to start that between the 16th and the 30th as well of March. Okay, so um, another one that has those same dates is kohlrabi. So kohlrabi I'm going to actually be starting today um, because I do, I do want to succession plant my kohlrabi. So I'm going to go a little bit earlier and put a cover over it and, um, and stuff like that. I, do, I always do that and they turn out great. We have some of the best kohlrabi. When you get those really early crops in and they actually produce ma like their maximum to the maximum capacity, and you get the you get them in the right season that they need to grow in you have some of the best food you've ever eaten and you have the most production um so kohlrabi is a cold season you need to put that out four weeks before your last frost date so again it needs to be started early it needs to be started you know with my frost date i need to start it before the 30th of march um lettuce now lettuce is one you the target date for planting lettuce out is april 12, 27th to may 4th right so that's kind of the window here and then um generally it warms up too fast so lettuce can bolt so for most varieties that are they have are prone to bolt those are ones that you would want to avoid planting after may the 4th um you want to plant your lettuce before that um, unless you have protection like a shade protection um, sometimes or a variety that isn't prone to bolting um, because that's when they produce the most the best mustard greens and stuff Mar march 16th to 30th is when you start those seeds here and april 27th is when you plant them out same with onions onions four weeks before your last frost date is when you plant out onions as well so i because onions take a really long time to start from seed the recommended time to start them is February 16th to March 2nd. So February 16th to March 2nd is the optimal window. I did start my onions sooner than that um, because I just wanted to. <laughs> um, I wanted to get them started first because I was planting so many other things. I wanted to get them germinated so I could use my shelving, my, my sprouting shelving for my flowers. So I had to start those a week early compared to what I would like, would have liked to. Um, but February 16th to March 2nd. So if you haven't start, if you, if you're wanting to start onion seeds and you are in a climate, you're in a climate where, um, your frost date is May 25th or sooner. You need to start those today um, if you haven't already. Peas, okay, peas. So peas, 
Ideally, you want to put them in the ground as soon as you can get your fingers in the ground and pop those peas in there, but you can start them as well. So peas, you can start as seedlings and transplant them out. You, you're, you're planting out planting out your peas, your target is for May 3rd or March 30th to April 13th for seedlings for peas, um, for transplants, because they are cold hardy. Um, I think you could probably um, do like winter sowing your peas and then just transplant them into your rows if you're doing that. So you could even take like, you know, a seed starting tray that has the, the, the cover on it. This is what I'm doing in my, in my, cold frame um, with lots of my poppies and delphiniums and larkspurs um, from the flower farm but you could also do this with peas as you can sprinkle your peas in a tray and cover with cover with dirt a little bit of dirt and water it in um, and then put your lid on top and then tape it and what happens is you can just set that right on outside you can put it on your barbecue as long as it's getting light and it's not going to blow off put it on the ground something so that the animals don't bother it as as long as it's getting light and let it winter so you can check on it make sure it gets it needs if it needs water if it gets too hot if it sprouts make sure it has it can breathe it, it has ventilation um, you can winter so and then once those are germinated then you can pop those into your garden um, and that you'd want to target date that for April 13th because they are really hardy for that spinach now spinach April 13th to May the 4th is your plant out date um, for spinach in my zone so um, in, or in my area where my frost date is May 25th so um, April 13th to May 4th is the optimal time to plant out spinach starts like the baby spinach um, and so you would have to start those seeds and I have to start those seeds March 2nd through April 6th so spinach um, tonight or tomorrow it's kind of chilly like it's quite cold still today um, but tomorrow it's supposed to warm up I'm gonna get a little bit of a heater going in my cold frame so I can actually work out there and I'm gonna start my seedlings um, some of my seedlings like spinach out there in the in in there um, because spinach does not like to transplant so if you want to do spinach starts I would recommend to do soil blocking now soil blocking is something if you don't have a soil block um, it's kind of hard to, you could, you could find a way to do it, I'm sure. Um, something that I've done, I don't know if I can show you. Um, something that I've done before with soil blocking is I've taken a lid like this and I've packed it full of soil, like really wet, like really, really, really wet soil. And then I flipped it down like on a thing. And so, cause it's full of soil when you flip it down, you could plunge that out and like pull this off and then just pull it. And then you have like a, a dirt disc that you can plant into stuff that doesn't like their roots being disturbed. And I've done that before when I didn't have a soil blocker and it works really good. You might want to use a lid that's not this size, but you definitely want one that you can use so that it plunges out. Like you can create, push it out so that um, it, it makes a really compact block of soil that you can plant into um, without disturbing their roots and it is it can be very efficient so this is not ideal because it's too big but you could probably put like three spinach seeds in there and then just put the whole thing out when you're transplanting so there's that other things like things that can go out before your last frost date so one to three weeks before your last frost date that is in this list as well so beets beets if you could start your beets at like by March 30th, between March 30th and April 13th, you could start beets and you can transplant your beets out into your garden by May 11th and they'll have plenty of time. They can handle that cold, the cold weather or any frost. Um, broccoli, broccoli is one that the target date for me, for me to plant out my broccoli um, here is also May 11th. And so that means that I have to start my broccoli I don't want to start it sooner than May 30th because if it gets too leggy, it's not going to do well. So my target date for starting my broccoli inside the house is from March 30th to April 13th. Now broccoli is when I'm also going to be doing some cold stratification because some of these seeds, they do need cold stratification to do their best. 
And so what that, what that looks like for me is I'm going to plant these out in trays in my cold frame and just leave them out there so that they're not gonna get disturbed inside my cold frame greenhouse in like seed starting trays with the cover on them, all watered in so that they can come out of hibernation on their own and, and germinate on their own um, inside that cold frame. Cause that cold frame is gonna be like 10 degrees warmer than the ambient temperature outside, especially inside those domes. So I'll be able to, they'll go through that cold stratification and then I don't have to worry about it with work and everything else it's all done it'll wake up on its own and it'll be it'll do its optimal um it'll 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 be during this optimal time window so then i can just transplant them out and it's less work for me and i'm gonna i'm hoping to do that with you guys um i'm really hoping to um we'll see how it goes and what the weather is like because if it's really cold i'm not going to want to stand with their video i just want to get it done and be done with it um but if we have a nice day and i'm able to work around things that are going on here i would definitely like to show you or at least give you some highlights and photos as i'm going through and doing it so you have some general idea of what i do um what i do might not work for you but might maybe it'll inspire you to try something that might work for you or um you know maybe you can configure your own plan just based on what I do. So um, there's that. Cauliflower is also um, March 30th, but you can go later. With cauliflower, it's not like broccoli. Broccoli, the last day for starting it is about the 13th of April. You can go a little bit further with cauliflower. Cauliflower is a little bit more forgiving with its start window. So I can start it from from March 30th all the way to April 27th. I can start it in the house and it'll be fine for transplanting out. But my transplant date is from May 11th to May 25th. And after May 25th, I'm not gonna have a long enough season um, to get those great big full heads that I really want um, and stuff like that. And also if I plant them early enough, they get, they build their immunity. They're nice and healthy so that they can handle the pest pressure. And that's really important for me here in my climate because we have a lot of pest pressure with cabbage moths and the worms and all the things. So there's that leeks. Now leeks are new for me. I have not grown leeks before and I am growing them this year and I'm super excited for that. Um, I did start my seeds today. So March 2nd is the day for seed starting your leeks. Now, because it's the 28th of February and March 2nd is only a couple days away, I went ahead and I started my leek seeds today because I had room on one of my seed starting trays and I wanted to get them germinated. Um, and so those will be planted out as a target date of May 11th, which is before, clearly before my, my last frost date. And so um, I think they're a little bit forgiving. The leeks that I'm growing, they have a little bit of a shorter season. So they're a little bit earlier season leeks than other ones. So I'm hoping that that is gonna work out in my favor. Parsley is one that you have to start February 23rd to March 9th. So I'm running out of days. I only have about a week left before I can't plant par or start parsley. It'll be too late. I won't get the harvest, the maximum production I need out of that parsley. So if I miss my March, if I don't plant my parsley be before March 9th, I'm not going to get the most out of the seedlings. I'm not going to have the, the, the best abundance that I can. So I won't plant it after March 9th as a seedling to start a seed. I won't do it because it's just going to take up garden space and not perform for me um, the way I would want it to in a high production, like, you know, as a homesteader. Um, of course, if I have the space, then it's not a big deal. But if I need to have a high efficiency garden where I'm producing the most, the maximum I can, I don't want to start that parsley in the house after May 9th or March, March 9th. Sorry, correction, March 9th. I have to plant that out between May 4th and May 11th in order for me to have the maximum production out of those plants. Um, and for me, you know, for it to be worthwhile, anything later than that, they're just not going to produce. I would have to, I would have to plant many more plants to get to the same efficiency if I was to plant just in that window of time. Swiss chard. Swiss chard is another one. So Swiss chard is um, something that if you, you can plant it out May, by May 11th in my zone or in my area, 
my frost in my frost zone my from my frost date i can plant it out on the 11th um, of may which means that my target date is march 30th to april 3rd is when i want to start those seeds to have that optimal production um, from from planting those plants as seedlings into my garden so those are some really important points um, to know all right so let's talk about some of the other things that are on this list that I have here. Um, artichokes are something I'm also growing for the first time. Because artichokes usually grow, or they, they usually are the second year when they produce, I did get a variety that, I can't remember the name, where is it? Maybe it's here. No, I don't think it's in here. Um, but I got, a, I got some artichokes, yeah, it's not in here. So the artichokes, they do produce the first year that I'm growing. So I started those seeds today um, as an experiment. I did start them as, because um, artichokes, they are used in cut flower arrangements. And like the artichoke flowers, they're very, very beautiful. So I'm going to multi-purpose those. I am learning how to use artichokes in our day-to-day -day life. Um, I think that they would be a really good food for us to have and to preserve. Um, so I wanted to grow them um, as all, a cut flower slash food production. So it's like a multi-purpose and I'm just winging it. It's kind of an experiment this year, but I'm really excited. So artichokes, you have to start them May 30th and you have to plant them out May 25th. Now, because I'm almost a whole month ahead of the game, the reason for that is because I am planting these inside of my greenhouse. If I was not planting these inside of my greenhouse, I would not have started the artichoke seeds until March the 30th in order to have that optimal May 25th. That's a speculation. I don't know for sure because I haven't grown them before, um, but that's what is recommended by Johnny's. So I'm hoping that that's accurate and I'm not giving you the wrong information. So take that as that's not my experience. That's just what I've hearsay um basil basil is one that you want to plant out well after your frost date so these are the list of things that you want to plant out after your last frost basil celery corn cucumber eggplant melons peppers pumpkins squash tomatoes and watermelons well what melons and watermelons are the same but they they all have to be planted out after your last frost date now corn you can plant out on your last frost date so if your estimated last frost date is 25th you can plant your corn the 25th if it's a nice day and there's no risk of a frost um, in the forecast you can do that you can plant your seedlings out um so there's that um, and you don't want to plant like corn. I can't plant it. Like I said, after June 8th, that's past my window of, of having optimal harvest. I could plant them out, but I'm not going to get the maximum production out of it. Um, another one, cucumbers, cucumbers. You don't want to start any sooner here where I am May 4th. I always remember, you know, like the, may the 4th be with you. <laughs> That's my cucumber reminder. <laughs> it's like every time it on social media, when everyone's making that may the fourth be with you memes, I know this is cucumber day. <laughs> and so I go and grab my cucumber seeds and I start, I start planting my may the fourth cucumbers, may the fourth be with you cucumbers. Um, so, and then I don't start any seeds after May 18th. Um, I will put them in the ground though um around the 18th I have done that before sometimes they come up sometimes they don't um depending on the variety but usually I would put direct sow seeds the around the first of June but or I will plant them out around the first of June between the first and the eighth of June I've even gone to the 14th of June and um my cucumbers they kind of started to really start producing well right when we started getting those colder nights um, and then we had really light frost and then they just, they, it cooked them. So I, I stopped doing that. I learned my lesson. It's, you know, may the fourth be with you is always cucumber day. Um, always. <laughs> so may that be with you forever. <laughs> um, eggplants. Eggplants are new for me this year. I have not grown eggplants. So according to this, what I've learned and how I'm growing them this year is I am planting them on, um, I'm, my target date would be to plant them out on 
June, June 8th to June 15th. But because these are going in my greenhouse, I got a whole month ahead of it. So I'm planting the, the, the target plant date of June 8th outside is going to be May 8th inside my greenhouse. So it's all shifted ahead a month because I have that growing extra growing season inside of my greenhouse. And I, I don't think the ground will be warm enough in there. Um, in my greenhouse before that. So that's why I waited till now. I started the seeds today for the eggplant. So um, March 30th is where you would normally start them if you're growing them outdoors. I'm growing them inside. So that made me, allowed me to do it a whole month ahead of schedule. But if you're growing eggplant outside here in our climate, you have to start them between March 30th and April 20th so that you can plant them for outside with the target of June 8th to 15th in our zone or in our climate, not our zone in our climate. I need to stop saying zone. I confuse so many people when I do that. When I reference zone, I'm thinking like May 25th zone. When I, when I say zone, I'm, I think I keep thinking like the May 25th frost zone. <laughs> That's what I'm, what I reference, but I need to stop doing that because then people think I'm talking about the planting zone or the hardy in this zone zones are so confusing. So the pepper plants, I started really early. I find that um, I started both my bell peppers and my hot peppers because a lot of them I'm going to be companion planting inside my greenhouse. Um, so I started them very, very, very early. I think that the hot peppers and the bell peppers should have two separate categories. Hot peppers like habaneros, they need to be started super duper early. Um, because here in our area, we don't get hot enough days. And so um, I found that peppers, they just, they have to be almost ready to start producing when they go out and has to be really hot when they go out or really warm. So I won't plant peppers outside after or before June 8th ever again. And they need to be like ready to produce when they go out. So that's me, but most, um, on, on the Johnny's website, I do know that they say they recommend April 13th um, to start your seeds. That's your seed starting day, that window around that week. And then um, your planting is your June 8th window for my, for my, for my frost zone. Um, pumpkins, pumpkins, June 8th, you can put your seedlings out for June 8th. And that's the May 11th to 18th is your seed starting window. Um, and tomatoes, tomatoes, April 6th to 27th, you can start your tomatoes. After the April 27th, you don't want to start your tomatoes unless they're a determinate variety. They're really early season. Um, maybe you could squeak it another week, but you would want to plant them out between June 1st and June 8th. I have planted them in my cold frame. Um, I planted, I've planted tomatoes in my cold frame with protection. Um, I think May 15th at the soonest and it did it, it it just stunted them they I may as well just left them in the house another week it really it really didn't help them much so yeah that's that so I hope that this kind of brings some inspiration to you in some way I hope that it helps you in some way maximize the production and up your pantry challenge game for next season if you are participating or it just gives you an an edge to know um, when to plant, what to start, stuff, stuff to think about, things to actually write down on your schedule. I will leave the link below to the Johnny's website so that you can actually figure out your specific actual detailed dates of when your planting windows are. And also there's tools on that website where you can actually figure out how many square feet you have and how many seedlings you need to start. So you can get really efficient and um, up your game, maximize your production, and you can kick some butt next year in the pantry challenge. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you next time. Bye for now. And to those that are in my community, thank you all for your prayers. Much love.